Monroe Alpheus Majors, black physician. Born 1864, died 1960. Monroe Majors, a black physician, civil rights leader and writer, was born to Andrew Jackson and Jane Barringer Majors on October 12, 1864, in Waco, Texas. At the age of 10, he worked as a page in the Texas legislature. He attended Tillestan College, now Huston Tillestan College, and Normal School in Austin from 1878 to 1883. He also worked for the post office. After graduating from Central Tennessee College, Nashville, with a Bachelor of Science degree in 1883, he enrolled at Meharry Medical College at Nashville, from which he graduated as salutatorian of his class in 1886. In college, he worked as a reporter for several local newspapers. In 1886, Majors began practicing medicine in Brenham, Texas. During that year, he became the principal guiding spirit and one of the 14 founders of the Lone Star State Medical, Dental, and Pharmaceutical Association. Shortly afterward, his name appeared on a list prepared by a group of racists of influential blacks who were to be uprooted from their positions of importance in the community. Dr. Majors received advance warning about this threat and left his practice in Brenham for Calvert and then Dallas. He ended up teaching in a small country school for a year, from 1887 to 1888. He later found out that two of the other persons on the list had been hanged. In 1888, he moved to Los Angeles and became the first black physician to practice medicine west of the Rocky Mountains. He was invited to lecture at medical he was invited to lecture on medical topics at Los Angeles Medical College in California. Race was not a bar to participation in the medical societies. In California, race was not a bar to participation in the medical societies. In 1889, Majors, Carey, Majors married Georgia A. Green. In 1890, after the birth of their daughter, he moved back to Waco to practice medicine and serve as lecturer in hygiene and sanitation at Paul Quinn College. He was at the college from 1891 to 1894. During this time, he built and operated a hospital for blacks in Waco. Between 1893 and 1895, he was editor of Texas Searchlight, a serial publication that addressed issues facing blacks. During 1893, Majors worked in Chicago at the newly established Provident Hospital and with Frederick Douglass for five months. He also published Noted Negro Women, 1893, a book of biographies of prominent black women of the period, which he had written in California. In the preface to this book, Major states the motivation for his literary efforts. Quote, the world is full of books, yet few of them appeal directly and peculiar peculiarly to the Negro race. Commend these pages to the reading world, trusting that they will for long stand out in a bold relief, a, signific a signification of Negro progress. Unquote. Majors moved to Decatur, Illinois around 1896 and to Indianapolis, Indiana in 1897. In Indiana, he served as associate editor of the Indianapolis Freeman between 1898 and 1899. He returned to Waco, where he was superintendent of this hospital, of his hospital, for two years, but moved back to Chicago in 1901. From 1908 to 1911, he was the editor of the Chicago Conservator, and for two of those years, he was on the Chicago Board of Health. During this time, he became a close friend of the poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Majors was active in civic and political affairs, especially in racial issues, an involvement that no doubt caused some of his frequent moves. He was also a member of the United Order of Odd Fellows, a Knights of Pythias, the National Business League, and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. He was a Mason, a Methodist, and a Republican. 
1921, he wrote First Steps in Nursery Rhymes, the first book of nursery rhymes written specifically for black children. He contributed articles and poems to other publications, including the Chicago Defender, The Bee, and the Chicago Broad Axe. In 1908, he divorced his wife and in 1909 married Estelle C. Bonds. They had one daughter. In 1925, Dr. Majors lost most of his vision. Thereafter, he was less active politically and professionally. He returned to his Los Angeles. He returned to Los Angeles in 1933, and died there on December 10, 1960. Citations are in the description.